Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments with a continuation on the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. If you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, I advise you to if you want to boost your Excel formula game. This is challenge 175. So what do we have here? We have a couple of sentences in column A and we have some others in column B. But let's take it row by row. What you are trying to do is says find the common words between sentence 1 and sentence 2 and then sort the common words. So we look at this sentence and we look at this and we look at the words that are common to them and then we create a string that concatenates those words with a comma space delimiter or make sure that um, it's sorted, right? This is A, D, T, sorted, you know, alphabetically. So basically, that's what it is. Um, it seems like a relatively easy problem. Let's see if the solution is as easy. But here's my idea. For now, you still have them as strings. So you may want to break them down into words. Right, so I can use a text speed. That's the easiest thing I think I can use. I can break this down. Let me spill these two rows. It's in a space as my delimiter. Okay, so those are all the words in sentence one. You can copy this over. Okay, and these are all the words in sentence two. Now it doesn't really matter, you know, which is longer, which has more words, because you are looking for the intersection. So what it means is whichever way you do it, whether you say look up b or sentence two in sentence one or look up sentence one in sentence two the words that are common to both of them will always show up okay and then you can decide to have the others that don't show up as a null set blank right double code double quote and you concatenate the results so the good thing is because we are looking for an intersection it doesn't matter if this one has 100 words and this one has five so long as a word doesn't appear when you do a lookup from either direction it means the word isn't in both of them so that's the idea we are going to implement okay so let's start up I'm going to use a text split and I'm going to use a lookup. So I'm going to start off by doing like an X lookup. Now my lookup value is going to be, you know, the words in sentence one. So I do a text split and I can just oh, keyboard keeps changing. All right. Okay. So those are the words you can, you know, highlight this portion and with the new display without F9, you know, you see the results. Okay. So now. Those are your words and you look them up in sentence two the words in sentence two meaning that you have to do a text split of sentence two which will be b2 you know space okay so those will be the words in sentence two right okay you can see that and then the return array you want to return basically the same thing okay. that i copied all right so copy uh too lazy to type all right, so once you do that, now, if not found, meaning if the word isn't found, then you can just return nothing, right? So basically, okay, so you can see now we have what? Danced in the air, okay? Or danced in the air, rather. <laughs> I was reading the sentence as it's danced in the air. So once you have this, you can then sort and we can then use a text join over it. So now, because I've chosen to spill it to, um, you know, more or less in the same row, yeah, the sorting will have to be done column-wise. If I had spilled it, you know, row-wise, then maybe the sorting will be easier. So it's it's neither here nor there for me anyway. You know, so I do a sort over this, okay? The most important bit here is how are you sorting? I'm sorting, you know, by column. So that's the most important thing. Okay, so at least you can see the A, dance, and D are together. So once you have this, you can then do a text join over this. So you do a text join, you use a comma space as your delimiter, and you tell it to also ignore empty cells. So you can ignore those empty cells before the actual text, right? And then you close the brackets, okay? And you pretty much have your answer. You can take this down. Yeah, I know I'm doing it out of, you know, range. You'd rather have me do it here, but I was just trying to maximize what I had on the screen. Okay, so, and um, that's your answer pretty much. The only thing that I would change here is now I've done it in one cell. I copy the formulas down to, you know, the other cells. What if I wanted it to spill into the other cells? So how do I achieve that? Okay. So in that case, I'm pretty much going to use this construct. This construct is really what helps me do my transformation, right? So I would then use the map function. So sentence one, I would... You know, make that a variable. I'll make sentence two a variable. It's easy once you've gotten the formula to work the way I've done it. Transforming it using the map is easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do map and I'm going to pick both. So this is going to be, you know, my first array. Then sentence two, all of them will be my second array. I go into the lambda portion and I need two variables. One to represent the elements in array one. I want to represent the elements in array two. So I can take X and Y. So what this means here, 
essentially is x is anything in you know column a y is anything in column b okay so it means that anywhere in your formula that you have a to you pretty much can just use x okay so here i could use x for the b2 i could use y and uh, this b2 here i could also use y now you see that this is repeated you could also decide to use a let right just to shorten it slightly and say let a particular variable be text split of this so you don't have to write this twice but anyway those are just some optimizations that you can do so let's try and finish this up so we close the lambda we close the map i think that's pretty much it okay so now we have maybe now i can bring it up here so it sits side by side with this colleague okay so <laughs> right so now you can see that we have pretty much the same thing now it's sitting in one cell and it spills to the other cell but like i keep saying about the formulas here that use you know the lambda helper functions maybe the map in particular or by rule by call but maybe basically the map once you have it working in one cell you, you you're almost home and dry i would say almost i don't want to say you're home and dry because sometimes you could find some interesting complexities but once you can get it to work in one cell first, then you're just more or less like creating a loop to say repeat the action for this one cell across the other cells or across the other rows. So the first thing is always make sure you're able to do it in one cell. I mean work you know, for one cell. Once you do that, then you can infuse the map and get it to work. So I hope you know you enjoyed this. You are free to uh, post you know your alternatives in the, uh, the comment section of the video. So if you did like the video, please hit the like button also subscribe to the channels excel moments with one word yeah but you have a subscribe you know button as you go through the video so please hit it huh? <laughs> thank you so much for now i'm out